good to see you all. I, I get a kick out of watching all of you and being part of your, part of your family for a little while. So I'm glad to have you here. Uh, welcome to Williamstown, New Jersey. <laughs> anyway, I, I do want to just mention we're starting a new series tonight. And the series is based on spirituality and recovery. And it's called The Journey to Spirituality. Tonight, I'm going to do an overview, kind of a connection to the concept of spirituality. And then for the next few weeks, I'll be concentrating on using the journey through spirituality connected to the 12 steps. And I'll share more on that tonight as we get into this. I want to begin by doing a reading from one of my, one of my eating disorder meditation books. And it's, it kind of fits into our topic for tonight. Trusting God. Most of us have spent a great amount of time and energy trying to order and arrange our own lives. We have searched frantically for something to hang on to, which would solve our problems. The harder we have tried to straighten ourselves out, the more problems have defeated us. When we came into our recovery programs, we were advised to let go and let God. At first, this may have seemed to be a huge cop-out. The idea of passively waiting for a higher power or a higher presence to do for us what we could not do for ourselves was an insult to our pride and our illusions of self-sufficiency. Many times we were afraid to let go. A higher power requires that we be willing to trust God with our lives in order to receive God's strength and direction. From our vantage point of limited knowledge, there's a risk involved in letting go. If we are willing to take this risk, we have the courage to face our fears, will eventually receive the peace and support which we so desperately need. Besides, what do we have to lose except our own weakness? Grant me the courage to trust God completely. One of the hallmarks of our 12-step program is the fact that we basically believe in the concept of a higher power, something that will guide us and strengthen us. So it involves a lot of faith, a lot of trust, a lot of things we have to do within our life. So that what I want to do is I'm going to do something that I really wanted to do for a long time, but it kind of connects my recovery, but it connects the concept of using two concepts I want to use on tonight. One is, and most of you know, I'm a whole Hallmark junkie. So I use the term God wink. God winks at us. But along with God winks, God sends messengers. And messengers are key to leading us on journeys in our life. And sometimes they come from some of the strangest places at the strangest time. And it's amazing sometimes how when you look back on your life's journey. And I really tell people, don't be afraid to sit down and write your life story down and go back and look at all the little God winks and messengers and things that have happened in the course of your journey. You know, it was a great experience for me to be able to do that, you know, with dots help, dot help me do put that together. And so the concept is, I really am able to look at this with a totally different set of eyes as you get older. But I want to share that with you tonight because one of my, I look at my own journey to spirituality, to my learning about spirituality. And all of this is connected to the concept of God and God and the concept of God winks. Because I think God spent a lot of time winking at me. I finally winked back. So I think we're finally getting, we're getting somewhere now. But the bottom line is I look back on my own life and as most of you know, I went to the seminary when I was 14 years old. My mother planned my priesthood for me. And I served 14 years in the seminary. You know, basically, you know, going through high school, college, graduate school. And finally, at age 26, I got ordained. Now, you got to realize, I had no knowledge of the world, no concept of anything. I was a naive little kid. And sometimes God winks at us in a very simple way. Well, I was sent to a parish in Vineland, New Jersey. When I got there, I was there a total of about a half an hour. And I found out that the pastor was a very sick alcoholic. And the housekeeper told me that I was going to run the parish. And I looked at the housekeeper and I said, what? He said, nope, you're in charge because he's never really here. He goes off on trips a lot. And so we expect you to run the whole place. Well, that was an experience. Not, I didn't have any idea at all what I was doing. So I, I didn't look at it as a God wink at that point. But I found out later it really was. And so for some reason, 
I actually ran the parish, taught high school, ran youth programs, did all kinds of stuff, not knowing how to do it. So it's interesting how we're able to get through things in life when we have to. But of course, you know, I had to do a little sedation at nighttime to keep me going and keep things flowing. So basically, I didn't really, you know, I, I was just kind of functioning. On my third year there in 1969, God knocked at the front door. I, I call these guy winks. Actually, it was a man named Morgan. He knocked at the door. I had no idea who he was. And he said to me, he said, Father, I want you to come with me. I said, where are we going? He said, don't worry about it. Just trust me and come with me. Well, I, I only knew him as a parishioner. I saw him in church a few times. So I got in his car and I went with him. He took me to an al meeting my first 12-step meeting. When I went there, I thought, oh, this is great because these are people that know about this thing called addiction and I'm living with this addict. So maybe they can tell me how to fix them. Because I was, I was a great fixer back then. Well, the str very strange people at al told me I needed to work on me. But I told them I didn't need any work. I was fine. He, was, he needed to work. So please give me the formula. I'll go back and fix them. Well, I figured if I keep going there, I went for quite a few times in that meeting because I figured maybe if I wear them down, they'll give me the formula. But they never did. They kept telling me that same old nonsense to work on me. I didn't understand what they were talking about. The good thing about the Alamon meeting was it convinced me to ask for a transfer. I went to a new parish in Atlantic City because I was really in a fixing mood. So I went to a very poor parish, figuring out I can do a lot of work there, work with a lot of people. And when I went there, I got right on my horse and I went right into, you know, running around like a nut, doing all kinds of stuff. I volunteered for prison chaplaincy. I got involved in doing all kinds of youth programs. I was doing everything right back on the trail again. I didn't realize I was avoiding myself. So when I was in 1973, when I was 33 years old, I had a nervous breakdown while I was in the rectory, ended up in a hospital. While I was in the hospital, they dealt with my, my alcohol situation. And then, but basically, the doctor came up to me and he said, he said, Vince, you know what? You're spiritually dead. You have no idea who you are. Do you know you're on a suicide mission of killing yourself? What's wrong with you? He said, you got to go find out who you are. And basically, I didn't know what he was talking about because I was a priest. What do you mean I didn't know who I was? And so the bottom line was he kept playing that seed inside of me. I joke today and say he probably went to the al meeting. He said the same thing they said. So basically, I said, these people follow you around after you leave. But the bottom line was I did get involved in AA. I did get involved in running around, but I never did any work in the program. I was basically what they refer to as a two-stepper. I did the first step and the 12th step, did both of them very well, but never did the 10 in between. And so as a result, I went on my run again. But God has a way of staying with you. I did a lot of stuff during that time, probably a lot of good. Helped start drug programs, all kinds of activities. Got real involved in the recovery community. I got involved as a person organizing it, putting it together, doing the same thing I did in the other parish. So finally, I was giving a talk at a parish. And after the talk, someone from the parish, you know, kind of confronted me and said to me, why don't you practice what you preach? And I didn't really care for that person too much. I got pretty angry at them. Did you ever notice that the people who get the angriest at are the ones that bring us to recovery? I love it. You know, I'm realizing that today. But the bottom line was, this person invited me to go see a doctor, a holistic health doctor, who began to drive. By the way, I went to prove, to, prove, to prove them wrong, of course. I went there, and basically, God wicked at me again. And that particular doctor had his own style, but he helped turn my life around and change my life. And my, my journey began again from there. Identified my eating disorder, the other addiction I don't want to look at. As a result, I got involved in other, another 12-step program. And for the first time, 
I was now 45 years old. For the first time, I began to do my steps, do my work, and take a look at me on the inside. It's funny how God had to take me on this journey, this long journey of getting to this point. And then all of a sudden, I met some very special people who later on became my sponsors, who worked the program with me. And as a result, I went from that program to another eating disorder program, which I so am actively involved in today. And gradually and gradually, I began to change my life, make decisions, and make decisions I had to make. See, God was leading me. And as a result of that, I realized the fact that I finally had to make a decision that took me 10 years to finally make with the help of a lot of beautiful people in recovery with a lot of very strong support system. I was able to transition my life into a new life. But before that, God also winked at me again. Before, back in 1977, God sent another wonderful messenger in my life, a guy named Norm, who invited me to go to a meeting in St. Luke's Hospital in Philly. And I didn't know this, but I went to the meeting and they told me at the meeting, I got five more messengers from God who told me I was starting a program called The Starting Point. It's really interesting how this stuff works, isn't it? And because I was at a point in my life where I said, oh, what the heck, I'll do it. And I did it. I started another program. And as a result, the process kept going. So I finally got to the point of my own recovery when I finally did my work. And now God has sent so many beautiful people into my life to help me continue this journey. But then comes the concept of something very special that happened to me in 1981. While I was running the halfway house in Philly, I met this lady and she needed to go to treatment. So I actually transported her to a place called Riverside House in Northeast Philly. I dropped her off and they invited me to stay for lunch. And at lunch, Bill, the director of the program, said to me, Vince, well, since you're here, Father, why don't you give the lecture at one o'clock? I mean, this is typical of program people. It was 10 minutes to one. I said, Bill, what do you want me to talk about? He said, talk about spirituality. I said, okay. So I got up, said a prayer, and I talked. I talked for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. When I was done, Bill came up to me and he said, that was really good. Why don't you come back once a month and give the same talk? I said, I'd love to. I have no idea what I said. He said he taped it. We had tapes back then. Gave me a copy of the tape. I played it in my car on the way home. God, I got a hell of a lot out of that talk. It was fantastic. It's amazing. Isn't it crazy how God works, this, this old stuff? But really, that tape opened up a door for me to begin to understand what the word spirituality really meant. It's also ironical, and God sends messengers. At that talk, I met a lady who later on become one of my best friends. Her name was Teresa Barrett, who later on became a counselor at Starting Point and really helped me tremendously in getting Starting Point moving in a whole new direction. But Teresa, when I met her at the talk, after I was done, she was a, a patient. She came up to me and she said, you know, I hate priests. I said, thank you. And then she decided to call me a few names, which I won't mention on the air tonight. And basically she said, you know, as far as I'm concerned, get out of here. Well, she came back to starting point, became my good friend. And later, you know, I actually was at, uh, with her you know, when she died. It's a beautiful part, another part of the story too. She's been a real influence in my life. And every morning in my meditation book that she gave to me, I read a beautiful note that she wrote and left me with. There's so many memories and things in that direction. And so I realized more and more, these are the ways in which the, the, this program works. But the gift that was given to me in that talk is what prompted me to begin the process of my lectures, begin the process of being able to share and begin the process of doing more work on myself and developing myself on a spiritual plane. I finally began to understand what those all those wonderful people in those programs were trying to tell me. They're trying to tell me what spirituality is. Then the big book, I read a quotation from Dr. Bob, 
where Dr. Bob reminded everybody at the convention that this is a spiritual program, not a religious program, open to everybody, every peer, everywhere and every place. And so the journey began. And I love it so much because I realized it's very powerful. It helped me change my life. It helped me later on to get married, to meet a very wonderful woman who gives me a lot of support. You know, inherit some three beautiful stepdaughters and begin to have beautiful grand, seven grandkids. And there's so many beautiful miracles that come when you finally look within, do your work, make your changes, and go on this journey. And I really believe this is something you just can't predict. We're taken in different directions in our life because the higher power works within us, whatever we choose to call that. The beautiful part about it is, it's interesting how you meet all these different people at different times in the course of our journey as we go through life. These are the miracles of the program. And what I learned from that, from that talk, and I want to share it with you because I've shared it a lot of times, you know, because I guess it came from someplace and it became part of my life and part of my journey and helped me to understand what spirituality really meant. And I finally understand that the word spiritual and spirituality really means to come to an awakening to who you are as a person, to come to an awakening of your personal self. The word actually comes from Latin and Greek, to come to an awakening of your spirit that makes you who you are. The beautiful part about this process of recovery. So in the talk, I actually did this. And again, I'm telling you right now, I only know this because I listened to the tape on the way home. But the bottom line is, in the talk, I, I actually brought up what I call the four spiritual questions and the five spiritual principles. The first question is, do you love yourself? Do you have a personal relationship with yourself as a person? You know, this talk was for me because I was really at the point in my life, I was just starting to look at, I needed to look, learn how to love me. And I finally understand that today that the only person I can truly, truly love on the face of this earth is myself. So I don't love myself. I can't give love to anybody else. It's got to come from my spirit, from my heart, not from my head. Second question is, do you like who you are? Do you enjoy, you enjoy being yourself and not trying to be somebody else? To love and like yourself is one of those powerful spiritual questions there are on the face of this earth. Because we have to build this personal relationship with ourselves as a person. Because God gave us the gifts that we have. We've got to be open to the messengers and open to the things that come our way. The third question is, do you respect and do you honor yourself as a person? You respect and honor yourself as a person. You know, respect is a powerful word. But if I don't respect myself, I can't respect anybody else. And so I'm learning in real spirituality to be able to respect, to be open, to realize the fact that I've got to continue this process of growing. And the last question is, do you care about yourself? I know for years I never cared about my body or cared about myself or my health. And finally, finally, I began the journey of taking care of this body, taking care of my physical needs, my emotional needs, my spiritual needs. Things began to change and I realized something from the gift of the 12 steps. And I say this as hard as I can say it. You know, you're looking at somebody who studied theology, studied philosophy, it's all the different theories. I learned nothing about real life until I was able to connect to these 12 beautiful steps, these 12 simple spiritual principles that will teach you self-love, self-awareness, self self-discovery, beautiful sense of yourself as a person. And I really believe there's a spirit inside of all of us that if we truly embrace, truly open up, then the gifts, the talents, the things in us will start coming out. And more miracles kept happening, more God winks and stuff to this effect. I never thought in my life I'd write books, be able to do some of the things I'm doing. But I realize more and more now with faith and trust in something greater than me. Because it's not me. It's not all of us. We're all connected to one another. We're all bonded to each other. We're all learning from each other and growing from each other. I said this so many times. There are no accidents. There are no mistakes. 
Each one of us is exactly who we are supposed to be. And that brings me to the five simple principles, spiritual principles. If we live by them, life will be positive for you. And the one the most basic spiritual principle of all is one day at a time. The owe that principle. <clears throat> live your life only for one day. We get too much time in our life trying to go back over the past, over the past, over the past. Why did I do this? Why did I do that? Because we're supposed to. What lessons did I learn? How can I grow? I've got to live in the present. Every morning when I do my meditation, I read for the green card of AA. The yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The yesterday is finished. It's done. Whatever happened, happened. I have to embrace it and accept it. Tomorrow's not here. Don't worry about it. Just stay in the present. Stay in the moment. You're not going to fix the whole entire world. Congratulations. What you can do, though, is work on you and maybe hopefully touch a few other human beings. And from there, they'll touch somebody else. We'll all pass it on one way or another. That's how beautiful and how powerful this program works. And so I realized today, the founders, when they put this program together, tried to get us to keep it simple. And that's where one day at a time comes into play. So just live in the moment. Celebrate each moment. Celebrate with gratitude. You know, the old timers, I used to hang out years ago and when I was first came into the rooms of recovery with a bunch of crazy people in the South Philly AA group and also the 4021 Club in Philly. And we had these guys there called the old timers. <clears throat> I guess because they were old, what can I tell you? But anyway, they call them the old timers. But these guys were a little different. I remember some of the guys the South Philly used to say this and say it so simply and so beautifully. The one day at a time thing. They used to say, if you wake up in the morning, the first word out of your mouth should be gratitude. You're awake. They used to say, you're on this side of the dirt. You're on the journey. Get down on your knees. Ask God to bless you and guide you during the course of this day. Then get up and do the best you can do during the course of the day. Maybe you'll learn something more. My old sponsor used to say, if you learn that much each day, you've grown. At the end of the day, get on your knees, say thank you for the lessons and the gifts of the day. Now I do the 10th step prayer at night. It helps me to look at my 10th step and to realize the fact that I have to say thank you for this day, for the people I've met today, people in my life today. And then after you've done all that, they used to say, go to sleep. If you have to wake up the next morning, get down on the knees, say gratitude and start again. One day at a time. And I love that principle. The second spiritual principle are three little letters, PPT, persons, places, and things. If you truly want to grow, then hang around people that are positive. Hang around people that will guide you and help you. Be open to good, healthy, positive people. That's why we have to learn that, you know, hanging around negativity brings negativity. Hang around positive situations and try to bring positive to others. I'm grateful today I've got so many people in my life, people in recovery, people that I'm not connected to. They're part of my tribe, I call them, my family. They're part of my growth, my process. And are they human? Sure they are. Do they make mistakes? We all do. It's all part of the journey. You know, what are you gonna do? You gotta fall down once in a while. You learn how to get up again. What can I tell you? But the beautiful thing, the more you build that, you'll learn in this program, you can't do it by yourself. That's why it's a we program. We are interconnected with one another. We're part of one another. And that's what's so important. I mean, we have all beautiful people connected. Look, look at the screen. You got the maestro. We have, you know, we got the, the editor. There are all kinds of wonderful people here. All kinds of beautiful things. We got Eric and Mark, two of my buddies. I call them the Bopsy Twins. They're great. The beautiful things. We even have the Zoom bus that comes in from Cape May every day. But we have to realize the fact that's what it's all about. You know, we have, we have Howie, you know, 
I, I just I, I just say howdy when I see them, you know. But all these beautiful people, you know, there's Will, who just lost a beautiful lady. She we didn't lose her. She's here tonight. I know she is. She'll always be here. Okay, who's part of our life and part of our journey. All these things are part of it. We don't lose anybody. Their spirit becomes part of us. We bring that spirit on. Those old timers I used to hang out with, most of them are gone now. I think there's one left. But guess what? They're not gone. Their bodies are gone. Their spirit's here. There's that person, place, and thing, which is so important. The third principle is the higher power. Faith, belief in something greater than yourself. Belief in the fact that you're being guided, you're being led. Be open to it. And it's not easy sometimes because we have this ego and this will and all this crazy stuff we get caught up in. I want to do it my way. It's a nice song by Frank Sinatra. I know it, but don't go there. We have to be open to listen, be open to learn. That's the important part of it. Even Jerome's learning that, so it's not a problem at all. We're all getting there a little bit at a time. You know, we have to do all kinds of crazy things, but it's part of the journey. So we learn after a while the importance of what life is. You know, the beautiful part about life is we have to learn that something out there is guiding us. I can't explain it. I don't want to explain it. I have my own nicknames for my, the God of my understanding. I call God the boss. You know, God's in charge. You know, and what can I tell you? You know, in my old days, I used to say other things about God, but now I say he's just the boss. He's guiding me on my journey every day. I got to check in with the boss, see what job he's got for me today. Today, he sent me all you crazy people. It's wonderful. You know, that's what it's really all about. The beautiful part about it. You know, he sent me Karen. He sent me Lucy, all these wonderful, great people that are part of my journey and part of my life. That's what it's all about. Simple and plain. And so we continue that journey. And that's really the connection that we have to one another. And so we have to be able to realize every day the importance of asking for guidance and realizing the fact that there's something, there's a higher power out there waking at us every day. Keep sending these messengers into our life. We have to listen to the messengers and be open. And sometimes we have to not listen till we get a headache and then we start listening. It's a big part of it. Let's do it the hard way. That's just who we are. The fourth spiritual principle is that word, that word God, G-O-D. We translate that as good, orderly direction. In short, listen, learn, and be open to guidance, be open to direction, and don't ever be done. This is not a program where you get it. So people say to me, when will I get to the point where everything will be wonderful and great? I said, well, if you're an addict, 22 years after you're dead. If you're a codependent, 75 years after you're dead. We have to do a lot more work, what can I tell you? But the bottom line is, who knows? We had a tradition very many times when guys from the program used to die, we'd actually all sign a big book and put it in a coffin. Figured he probably wouldn't need it on the other side. He's got a lot of work to do yet. And so the bottom line is, we're on a journey. I'm really honest with you. I hope I do have to make meetings on the other side. Because meetings are where we meet people and connect with people. and part of our life and part of our journey. We have to also learn also not to take things so rigidly. Loosen up. Enjoy your journey on this earth. But enjoy one another. That's where that concept of listen, learn from those around us. There are so many beautiful teachers and some of them come in the strangest ways and the strangest times. Let me tell you a story. I got to get a story in here, you know, or I'll let be disappointed if I don't get a story in. You know, one of my favorite stories that's in my book, I just get a kick out of it. You know, years ago when, and back with the old timers, we used to do a lot of crazy stuff. We can't do that now. We had a guy in, in, in one of the old groups called Duct Tape Charlie. He used to actually capture people, duct tape them, duct tape their mouth and take them to treatment. You know, now today it's called kidnapping. We can't do that now. But I remember one guy, we had at the South Philly Clubhouse, we had this guy that 
used to come to the meetings while he was drunk, he was high, he was off the streets, and God, did he smell. He would come to the meetings and disrupt them. He'd take him outside, calm him down. He'd come back in, disrupt it. He became a regular after a while. So finally, we got tired. And we said one day, you know what? You're going to treat me. You're going to detox. He says, I ain't going to detox. You're going to detox. So we got some rope. We tied him up. Now, he stunk so bad, nobody wanted to put him in our car. So we found a rug in the street. We laid him in the rug, rolled it up, and duct taped it shut. Had his head out one end, his feet out the other end. A friend of mine from South Philly worked for the, one, of the, uh, one of the undertakers. We borrowed the hearse, put him in the back of the hearse, and took him to Camden Detox. Here's another guy wink. Got the Camden Detox, and the lady that received him at Camden Detox was Alice Hunkins, who later on became a counselor at Starting Point. It's amazing how this works. Beautiful thing about it was we actually sang Amazing Grace as we brought him into detox. Well, the ironical part about this is that gentleman, his name was Joe. Um, I'm not going to tell you his last name. Joe, when he got sober and got himself straight, became my house manager at the halfway houses in Philadelphia. That's amazing, isn't it? And he lived to tell that story. He loves telling it. And he's, little, he's a grouchy little Italian. We love the hell out of him. Did a good job running the halfway house for me. It's amazing, isn't it? How things happen. These are the God winks. These are the things that we're connected with. I mean, there's no way we can say there's not something out there guiding us in these directions. Even the founders of this program, I am convinced, did not really know what they were doing. They put this program together. Now think about it for a minute. A bunch of recovering drunks got together and put this program together. This, this beautiful spiritual program. They put a book together where nothing in it is absolute, it's all suggested. Beautiful 12 steps. It had to be divinely inspired. It had to be a God working in that. And later on, when I do the principles, I want to go through the spiritual principles, we need to be able to take them because I really believe this is a program for life for everybody, not just for a certain area. It is a way of life and it works. That's what's so beautiful about it. And yet if we live by these principles, everything comes together. And that's the last principle. I have to learn, never, never, never give up. Keep coming back. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to screw up. We are human beings. I learned this from the old timers. All of us only have one day. It's all we have. No one knows about tomorrow. And that's why I keep coming back. Keep doing it to the best of your ability. Keep learning. These simple principles to live by. These simple principles will teach us to live each day to the best of our ability, to appreciate the people around you, to appreciate the little things. You know, God sends all these great teachers into our life. You know, he sent me grandkids into my life. And my, my granddaughter always reminds me of certain things. You know, I love her. I just spent the weekend with my grand, two of my grandkids in West Virginia. And I got to drive home in, the wind, in those uh, snow squalls yesterday, Monday, I mean. It was really interesting, but God took care of us, got us home. But I, I got to spend time with my granddaughter. My granddaughter, I love her, you know, and she always makes little statements to me. Like she, on my 75th birthday, she actually said to me, Papa, you're three quarters of a century old. You only got one quarter century left. Make the best of it. I love her. Simple little things. And yet she's right. It's a beautiful part about it. You know, she's the one that taught me, you know, what a smartphone was all about. I had no idea what a smartphone was. I figured I had a dumb phone. I had to get a smartphone. But the bottom line was I've learned so much from these kids. My little granddaughter in Montana was there one day. Living with I couldn't figure the phone out. She grabbed it out of my hand in two seconds, put the whole thing together for me. Nine years old. Scared the hell out of me. She could do things on that phone that were magical. But we have to be open to people to learn from them. That's why teachers come in all sizes, shapes, and forms. And if you're a true spiritual person, you work on your sense of spirituality, you're open to learn new things and new directions. 
and be open to where things are going to be led. You never have to worry. You know, I'm Italian, because you figured it out by now. But I, when I grew up, as soon as I was born, I was born into a family where they pinned and gave me a PhD in guilt, worry, and fear. They became my mantra. And I've learned today, why worry? Whatever's going to be is going to be. Do the best you can. Go to sleep. Wake up. Enjoy the people around you. Take no one for granted. And never stop saying and let people know that you love them. Love is a powerful word. It overcomes fear and everything else. You know, I'm telling all of you tonight, I love all of you. You're my family. And no matter who I meet, no matter where I go, and those people about this program, no matter where we go, we have family. We can be interconnected no matter what. It doesn't make a difference. We're part of each other. And so real spirituality is learning principles to live by. Do the best you can with it. Will you do them perfectly? I hope not. I hope not. Thank God we were made human. Because we got to have some screw-ups, to have some make-ups. All that kind of stuff is wonderful. That's what it's all about. We're going to go through losses. We're going to go through changes. We're going to go through a lot of things. And things we just don't know. You know, I say this all the time, but a long, long time ago, Charlie, a long time ago, I was actually 20 years old. I think you were too at one time. Most of us here were, I think. Maybe Howie was, but the rest of us were. At one time or another, I was 20 years old. And when I was 20, guess what? I knew everything. I had it all settled. And then something happened. I turned 30, discovered all the questions. I turned 40 and found out there weren't any answers. And I turned 50 and what are you going to do? And I turned 60, the heck with it all, I'm going to enjoy it. And then I turned 70, I let it all hang out. And now I'm in my 80s, I can really have some fun, right, Luz? It's great, man. You just get out there and enjoy it and celebrate and stop beating ourselves up. Life is to be lived. I mean, Carol's been, her, her arm, show them that arm, will you, Carol? She got, she, I, I keep telling her to stay out of the ring. She's going back. It's beautiful though. You know, this is the beautiful part about life. We can laugh at one another, we can joke with each other, we can enjoy one another, and we can cry with each other. Isn't it wonderful? That's what it's all about. We're not gonna be here forever. I don't wanna be here forever. I'm able to enjoy the moments I have right now. And life does change. We experience different types of sicknesses, stuff to that effect. Got it, this human body. You know, we, we do the best we can with it and enjoy it. So with gratitude and with love, I wanna share this next series with you because it's a big part of this journey. I want to share this series with you because I want to work on next week the first three spiritual words, most first three spiritual principles, and they're based on acceptance, faith, and trust. And then we'll go on a journey with all these principles, but to apply them to our daily, everyday life, because that's how this program has to be lived. That's why the founders put in that 12th step. Practice these principles in all of your affairs. It may have changed, I think they could have changed the word a little bit. I don't think they were telling us to go out and have affairs. But the bottom line is, we have to practice these principles in every aspect of our life. And that's really what it's about. You've got to keep it that simple and enjoy it. So I hope this helps you tonight to understand the concept of spirituality. And I look back on that talk in 1981. And I have so much gratitude. I still don't know where it came from, but I do know where it came from. And, you know, to listen to that and then make it part of my journey and part of my life. Now I understood what that doctor was saying to me. Those wacky people that Alan and were saying is totally amazing. They knew exactly what they were saying. They were trying to get me to do some of the things I needed to do. So the higher power works in funny ways. Whatever we choose to call that doesn't make any difference. Higher presence, higher power, God, I don't know, whatever works. So I don't debate anymore. 
whatever keeps you on the journey and helps you to have a better life, that's what's important. You got to keep it in that direction. And so tonight, as I pray, I'm asking God to guide us and be with us as we go on this spiritual journey together. Let us pray. God, we come before you as a family. We come before you in prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We come in gratitude. We come in a sense of humility. And we thank you for being a guide to sending us on this journey, no matter how long we have to be here. Help us to be open, to learn, to grow, and to experience the beautiful things that you send our way. Help us to deal with the struggles and the sorrows we go through. Teach us never to forget those who have gone before us. They're all part of our journey. Their spirits are part of who we are. Help us to pass on the things that we learn to all those that we meet. But above all, teach us to love and support one another and be open, knowing that you will be to work with us on the journey. So we ask you to bless us, guide us, and help us as we continue this journey each and every day of our life, one day at a time. We pray this and we ask this in your name. Amen. Now I'm going to ask if you don't mind unmuting. I got to tell you before we say this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not mine, be done.